Okay, back at it. So, part three. The bottom drawer. So, the bottom is where I keep all of my sets of everything. Or most of my sets of everything. So, this is a snap-on 48-piece um, thread restoration kit. This is a pretty, pretty valuable tool until you lose one of your components. So what this is, this is a thread restoring tool, not a tap. This doesn't cut, it just reforms the threads. And why would you, uh, you know, what's the difference? Why would you want that? So you know, let's say you have a hole that uh, was stripped out. You run a tap in it, even if you get the tap just a little off, you can mess up the hole and mess the threads up. These won't mess them up, they just goes in and they kind of clean them up. So these are for internals, these are for external threads for like on bolts. And then these are thread files. Um, they got different uh, uh, thread pitch. That's a 250, a metric. So you take that and you put it on your bolt. And I'll say that's a bolt. And you do that and you can clean the threads up. I've got my, uh, this box. It's actually a shim set uh, from when I used to work on the uh, oil field and compressors, line them up. It's just my uh, drill bit, stuff like that. That I keep. This is a, in my opinion, this is the best quarter inch or, or is it quarter inch? I think it's three eighths. Yeah, three eighths. This is the best um, inch pound torque wrench on the market because it does zero to 250 inch pounds. So on a torque wrench, whatever range you're trying to get you want your torque range you know you want that range to be somewhere in the middle of your torque setting so for example if you have something that's got 100 inch pounds this is a great candidate if you have something that's 250 inch pounds you don't really want to use this you can um but it's not really suggested also on the other aspect if you've got something that's 10 inch pounds you don't really want to use this one because the graduations on the scale aren't that uh, fine but this is the widest range inch torque uh, uh, torque wrench I've ever seen. So standard torque wrench, you've got your little um, uh, needle gauge here. You can put that uh, uh, where you need to go, and then you torque it down. That orange needle moves. Extremely handy tool. I think this is a uh, little impact. Come on. There he goes. Little impact driver. Uh, it's got a little adapter here that you can put uh, different fittings in for like um, screws. So what this does is you put that head on it like that. You put it on something like that. You hit the back end with a hammer, and uh, as you hit it down, it takes it lot, takes it off. So they call it an impact driver. Um, this is pretty standard snap on, uh, standard uh, uh, tap and die set. You can tell I'm missing a lot of my taps. Not so much more of my die. I got all those. This is a um, ATD uh, metric universal O ring set. These come in pretty handy to have. If you do hydraulic repair, you got to have a 400,000 different kinds of O-rings because uh, you'll always get to that point where you just you don't have the one O-ring that you need. This is a small snap-on torque wrench. Now, the reason I have this bought this one is because I couldn't find that one because somebody had, uh, uh, an old uh, ex-business partner of mine um, stole this one and went to a uh, pawn shop. They finally told me what pawn shop is at, so I had to go. This is the second time, this is, okay, story time. Second time I've had to go buy my own stuff from a freaking pawn shop. So, one time, one day I was a uh, 2004 or five. I had this pontoon style um, gas powered air compressor, and um, you know it's just a little roll around, looks like a wheelbarrow kind of. So I bought one, brand new. It was an MTM, nice, 800 bucks. Uh, wasn't making a lot of money at the time, but I was going to start doing side jobs for people, and that's the reason I got it. A buddy of mine says, "Hey man, I need a transmission in my van. Can you come over here?" Sure. So I went over. Worked on his house, um, took the um, uh, compressor over there, got the transmission out, put the transmission on the ground, and said, hey, could I just leave my compressor on the ground here? He goes, yeah, that's cool. A couple weeks go by. I call him and go, hey, man, I need to come get my compressor, because he was supposed to go get a transmission from a junkyard, and he never did. 
He's like, oh yeah, uh, 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 give me a call tomorrow. So I call him the next day, no answer. This goes on for about six, seven, eight weeks, something like that. Nobody's heard from the guy, can't get a hold of the guy. The place he was living out, he don't live at anymore. So I come home one day, um, this is how, how long ago it was. I was, must've been 2002. I was still living in my, I moved back into my mom's house uh, for about six months. So anyway, come home to my mom's house, there's a pawn ticket. Clothes pinned to the uh, uh, freaking mailbox. The guy went and pawned my compressor and gave me the fucking pawn ticket. So I had to go pay $250 to get my compressor out of the pawn. <laughs> so I was real happy about that. This one was only $50, but still, I mean, you live and learn. All right, back to it. This is my um, snap-on uh, half-inch torque wrench. That's the kind of style I like to use. I'm not gonna really take it out because I don't even think the torque, but I really like this one because, uh, uh, well, I will take it out. I don't know if you guys, some of you guys probably haven't seen that style. They make three different styles of uh, torque wrenches, basically. There's ones with twisty handles, um, which is like this one. Okay, you twist the handle to get the uh, graduation to make these, where you flip this, you turn it to whatever um, torque you want, then you flip it back up and you tighten it down. I really like these because they're super fast. They're really, really quick um, to do and they're, they're pretty accurate. For accurate enough to uh, for what I want to do now something else I do want to have a legal disclaimer not legal disclaimer. <sighs> you see what I mean that stupid flashlight come back on and that's just ridiculous why they would build some piece of junk like that man I'll probably pay two hundred dollars for that cracker anyway um torque wrenches if you're just gonna use occasional use torque wrenches go to harbor freight Spend 15 bucks on a torque wrench. Don't worry about it. The thing is, it's going to be almost as accurate as a snap-on out of the box. It's not going to be that big of a deal. I mean, these things, the things you're using it for aren't super critical, you know. And I, if you're going to pull a transmission apart and put the valve body back on, you'll want to get a super, you know, a really nice torque wrench to use. But putting like a cylinder head on a car or putting your crank on stuff like that, Harbor Freight's fine. Um, there's plenty of videos online where guys have tested Harbor Freight versus snap-on and they're almost as accurate as the high-end ones. Now, the reason I carry, I've got three different snap-on ones. I've got this one, I've got that one, and I've got a digital uh, tech angle wrench that I keep uh, in storage. I carry snap-on because people don't, um, or most people don't argue with the quality of snap-on. They will say that they, they're overpriced, they cost too much, you know, and some guys are way too proud of their tools. But I pull a snap-on torque wrench out to work on your equipment or your vehicle. You know, you like seeing that, you know, because you, you know, snap-on's a name brand you can trust, whatever. And I get these certified every year. If I pull a Pittsburgh tool or Harbor Freight and you know about tools and I'm working on your, you know, $700,000 piece of equipment, you know, you're probably going to be a little, little retentive about it. So that's the reason I carry snap-on. All right. This is a... Um, this is a microphone? Yeah. I really like this tool. I don't get to use it enough. This is a uh, uh, microphone. So you've got this as a blue point. You screw this into this. You snake that around. And what you use this for is like listening to bearings. So a lot of times, like especially on these diesel trucks, whenever the engine's running, you can't hear... Um, uh, you can hear a squeal, but you can't tell where it's coming from. So you put these headphones on. You stick that up there by it. This will tell you where that exhaust leak, the vacuum leak, the boost leak, um, all that stuff it comes in real, real handy. And this is a little, uh, I'm not going to open it, but this is a little uh, pencil die grinder. These things are fucking awesome, man. They got these little carbide bits. Number one thing I use this for is for uh, uh, drilling out um, uh, uh, broke off bolts. You can get these real, real tiny little bitty carbide bits off of uh, eBay for pretty cheap. That whole setup's like 15 bucks. Works really good. These are, um, I bought these when I worked at Volkswagen. They're four millimeters or 16 millimeter. They call these triple squares. And why are they called triple squares? Because these are not torques, okay? 
they're not. They're uh, three squares in one. So, you know, it's it's like a 12 point Torx basically. Um, Volkswagen head bolts are um, uh, that size. You can tell because that's the only two I ever used. The rest of them all look brand new. Never used those after that. This is a Blue Point sheet metal holes cutter kit that I've never used. See, they're all brand new. I thought I was going to use it and never did. It's worked. It's something that worked pretty good. This is my assortment of electrical connectors. Um, so a little background on electrical connectors that I use. I don't use cheap stuff. Um, use the higher end stuff. So what is higher end stuff? So mainly the higher end stuff will have heat shrink on the back built onto it. The ones that are sort of see-through, like this kind of opaque color, are the one of the better ones. They're made out of, um, I forget if they're made out of PVC or they're made out of nylon. I think nylon. Um, they tend to work better. I do have some solid color ones, but these are high, you know, higher end solid color ones. These are not cheap ones. Um, the cheap ones you get at like AutoZone, uh, O'Reilly, stuff like that. When you crimp them down, the, the insulation um, uh, splits on them and it's it's not good for electrical connectors. So it's my electrical connector. Now I'm running out of room to stack stuff. This is just a, uh, a different tap and die set. This is Century. I bought this because I was at... Um, uh, I was out at, I forgot where I needed. I was buying an ordering tool that didn't have the tap size it needed, but they did have the tap in this set. So I bought this set. It was like 40 bucks or something like that. And you just can't have enough taps and dies. This is a relay test jumper kit. That's what this is, if you got a, uh, uh, if you have a relay, it's stuck down in a hole. And the, if you pull the relay out, well, you've killed the circuit. So what you do is you stick these in down to the relay you stick the relay on top and then it gives you some test leads to actually test it so this is uh, good for two reasons one you leave the circuit loaded okay why is that important if you pull this the relay out you can measure voltage on one side you can get 12 volts or whatever your voltage is supposed to be so you're like oh i got voltage here you put the relay back in but when you complete the circuit if there's high resistance in the circuit that 12 volts can go down to like one, you know, one and a half volt, 0.4 volts because of corrosion or because it's shorting out on something. This took me a while to figure out when I became a mechanic because I would take a, a relay out and I would back or stick a probe down in it. Oh, I got 12 volts with well, that, you know, that's good. So I learned this is the way to go. You stick this in, you put the relay in and it leaves the circuit energized and then you'd measure your voltage. There's a guy on YouTube that makes a, uh, circuit tester um uh it's called as uh, uh, the load pro from uh dan sullivan check out dan's videos he goes he's got tons of videos why you want to check a circuit loaded not just voltage you got to have a load on it to see if you've got a good and it, it's it's really really good um the guys who who, who understand this on a circuit as uh, testing circuitry you're gonna go far, you're gonna do good. The guys that don't understand this or refuse to believe it and just back probe crap and then hope for the best, you know, like, well, I got voltage, must be a computer. You know, the guys that are gonna cost a customer thousands of dollars now get a tech. It's a little Milwaukee bit set. Um, I'm missing most of the bits in. This is a Mac Tools Air Evac uh, setup. So what this is, take a radiator cap off, stick this in a hole, you tighten this down, Okay, that's universal, so it goes in all those. And you've got this little valve on here, okay? So this valve sticks in it like that. Put your air hose here. Air blows, now all this is, and there's a, a hole that goes out here and this comes up. As air is blowing across here, it has a Venturi effect and it pulls a vacuum on this and this will pull a vacuum. So why do you want or need this? Um, a lot of front wheel drive uh, or wrong wheel drive uh, import cars and some of the newer cars, the radiator is not the high, the radiator cap is not the highest point in the coolant system and there's air pockets in the engine that you will never be able to bleed out unless you pull a vacuum or you, you screw with it a whole bunch. So you use this, two reasons. One, you pull a vacuum. You pull a vacuum down, you shut your, your valve off and you watch. If that gauge starts bleeding off, you know you've got a coolant leak somewhere. If it doesn't bleed off, you're good. 
doesn't bleed off, you take this off, you take this hose, which I'm not going to take out, and you hook it to here, put your hose in a, your uh, radiator, your coolant, your antifreeze, you open this up, and it'll actually suck the coolant through here into the system to where you don't have any air in the system. I think I just, yeah, I just lost my pen. But it's all in the same box, so it'll work. Very, very good tool. I use this thing a lot, and I cannot believe I still have all the pieces to it. This is a um, uh, Blue Point Master Power Steering Pump Alternator Pulley Kit. And it works. I'm not real, real impressed with this kit. Um, those of you who don't know, Blue Point is made uh, for Snap-on. It's a Snap-on brand, but it's supposedly only um, uh, it's overseas. It's what Snap-on had made overseas, but even most of Snap-on stuff now is made overseas and um, assembled in America. So, <clears throat> yeah, I like that. Made by USA. Professional? No, it's not. It's not made by USA. It's made in Taiwan. Don't forget, one of these says it on here. That's not that one. Anyway, um, uh, so I'm not real happy with this kit. Um, it works um, most of the time. You know, and sometimes you know you gotta finagle something different. This a little Mac tools um, set that I bought. I know these are uh, uh, Torx, uh, like three inch drive, half inch drive uh, Torx sockets. These I bought off eBay. These are just two different metric and standard uh, Allen socket sets. And this I don't think there's anything in here. Fuel injection pressure tester. So this company, Star Tools, they make pretty decent stuff. It's cheap stuff though, and I have broken this freaking fuel pump uh, test kit. So that's why it's not in here. Um, I've got an assortment of a heat shrink, another assortment of heat shrink, some AC O-rings, a different set of uh, Mac, Mac Tools um, Allen sockets. is a snap-on fuel injection pressure tester which is also not in the box it's in the uh, one of the other compartments this is a, now this I like this tool this is a proto uh, screw extractor set what this is it's got all these and it used to have a full set and it used to have easy outs to complement all these and drill bits in here but I've lost them all so what this is I mean you have a piece of pot um, uh, you know, like a piece of pop nipple that's uh, broke off flush. You hammer this dude in there, then you twist it out and it pulls a piece of pop off. You can also use it for bolts um, if you drill a hole out in a bolt, but it's mainly meant for taking out pipe. It works extremely well. This is most of my pieces too because of that. I'm gonna buy another one of these. These are extremely, extremely good tools. I really I like this tool, but I ended up uh, uh, robbing some stuff out of this tool for some other things. What this is, cut your high and your low for AC work, so let's take our high valve out. So this threads into here like this. Okay. This snaps on to your high side and your AC uh, Schrader valve. You open this, okay. So you've got a hole all the way through it. You take out your appropriate Schrader valve tool, okay. You stick this through the hole. You tighten it down. So that's there, right? So as you spin this, you can pull your Schrader valve out. Pull your Schrader valve out. Go ahead and unscrew this. Anyway, push the radiator valve out. This pops up. It closes the valve out. Hang on. So anyway, um, you unscrew this one part. Like that. Pull this all the way up. And it's sealed right there. So now you've got no Schrader valve. You close this. You pull this off. And then there's your Schrader valve. And you can install it. So why is this important? Because when you're attacking a shop, I'd probably say about 40% of your leaks for AC systems are Schrader valves. 
So if you have some Freon left in the system and you just got a little leaking Schrader valve, you can use this tool, swap out the Schrader valve, and if it's warranty work for uh, the dealer you're, you're working for, you can charge them for evac refill. So you can actually make a lot of money um, by getting able to, or being able to uh, do this while the car's you know while it's on the car, and not having to do an evac recharge. You can do this on the drive or out in the parking lot. It takes you about five minutes. To swap that valve down, and you're good. You just made yourself an hour labor. So. Um, I guess uh, rattle on a little bit more. So why is uh, uh, what is what I'm going to talk about? So most shops, most automotive shops, and some truck shops, uh, zero equipment shops that I'm aware of, have what's called flat rate or flag hour. So what flag hour is is, let's say Volkswagen says to do a water pump on a Volkswagen Beetle with a 1.8T is a four and a half hour job, or a four hour job, or two and a half, whatever it is. And warranty time is probably two hours. So pull that car in. I get that water pump done in one hour. I got paid for two hours labor. So if you're really good and you have a really good day, you can effectively flag 10 to 20 hours in a day. So I made, you know, I only worked eight hours, but I got paid for 20. Adversely, that same two hour job takes me five hours. I only got paid for two hours on it. So sounds like a really good deal. And it used to be a really good deal. But from my experience, most flat rate and especially dealers is only designed to screw the mechanics out of getting paid. That was my experience. I'm sure some of you guys that have worked in dealers, you know, y'all had a really great uh, experience, a lot better experience than I did, but I didn't like working at the dealer, you know, the Volkswagen dealer I worked at. Uh, I'll never go back to an automotive dealer because of the flat rate you know, bull crap. What'll happen, and this is the reason I left uh, Volkswagen, work on a car leaves comes back with a problem unrelated to what i fixed i have to fix it for free and they back flag me for the previous repair so i got flagged for like 400 dollars on a cylinder head job one time that you know wasn't anything to, to do it was because i did a tune-up on the motor i did a tune-up the car came back with a shredded uh, timing belt look down in a timing belt there's this little nut down in there next to it in the crank this nut is a standard thread nut. It was a, um, uh, a quarter inch, um, uh, what, 12, 12 pitch standard nut. It's a Volkswagen. Everything on a Volkswagen is metric. One, I wasn't even in the time and belt area at all. And so I showed that to my supervisor and he's like, oh yeah, well, you know, we'll, we'll you know, just go ahead and fix it. We'll, you know, uh, we'll pay you to do it, you know, and we're not gonna argue with the customer. Okay. Did the job, looked on my check, and they had backflagged me for everything on it. You know, the price of the cylinder head, the price of the time and belt, the price of everything. Big, you know, rigmarole. Got screwed on the deal. But anyway, I digress. That's my middle box. That's all my tools and everything. I'm going to go ahead and put those back up, and then we'll move on to the one. And it'll be uh, part four. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Run down in the comments. And uh, leave a comment if you want to. Take it easy and uh, get out and fix something.